Today we are going to discuss about pelvic ultrasound. Let's discuss about the orientation of image first. There are two types of scanning planes. Number one is sagittal plane, number two is transverse plane. Sagittal image or sagittal plane is also known as longitudinal or vert vertical plane and it divides the body into left and right. In sagittal plane, we put the probe in a way that its notch faces upward. So as you can see here, in sagittal plane, the top of the image is pointing toward the anterior aspect of the body. The bottom of the image is pointing toward the posterior aspect of the body left side of the image is pointing toward the patient's head while the right side of the image is pointing toward the feet of patient in transverse plane we take the transverse section of the body with the notch of the transducer facing towards the right of the patient So in transfer section, the image appears in a way that the top of the image shows the anterior aspect of the body, the bottom of the image shows the posterior aspect of the body, and the left side of the image shows the right side of the body, and the uh, uh, right side of the image shows the left side of patient's body. Let's start our discussion about the pelvic anatomy now. Vagina lies between urinary bladder and rectum. The vaginal canal is indicated by the bright line separating the anterior and posterior walls. Sometimes vaginal cavity is distended due to presence of uh, blood uh, in a condition called hematocolpus and uh, sometimes it is distended due to presence of RPOCs. Now let's talk about cervix. Cervix is the lower cylindrical neck of the uterus which projects into vagina. There are two important parts of cervix. Number one is internal loss Internal loss is the junction of the uter uterine cavity and endocervical canal. Number two is external loss. External loss is the junction of the endocervical canal and vagina. As you can see in this image, we can see external os only in a non-gravid uterus. But in a gravid uterus, we can see both internal and external os. The top of the uterus is called fundus, while the rest of the uterus up to cervix is called the body of uterus. The wall of uterus facing urinary bladder is the anterior wall, while the wall of uterus facing posteriorly is the posterior wall of uterus. The area behind the posterior wall of uterus is called caldi sac or pouch of Douglas. Let's talk about the layers of uterus now. Number one is endometrium. Endometrium is the inner layer which varies in thickness and echo pattern with the stage of menstrual cycle. Number two is myometrium. Myometrium is the thick middle muscular layer. Number three is serosa, which is a thin outer layer of uterus. Endometrial thickness depends upon the phase of cycle. In early proliferative phase, the endometrium is very, very thin. While in late proliferative cycle or mid-cycle, we can see trilaminar appearance of endometrium in which we can see the basal layer, the functional layer, 
and the endometrial cavity and in secretory phase of menstrual cycle the endometrium becomes very echogenic This is the picture of same uterus. On one side, there is trilaminar appearance of endometrium, which shows the mid-cycle. And on the other hand, there is a, a thickened echogenic endometrium, which is showing the luteal phase. In luteal phase, endometrium is under the influence of estrogen and progesterone. The glandular epithelium secretes a glycogen rich fluid and moreover spiral arteries become more tortuous. The basal layer remains thin and hyperechoic throughout the menstrual cycle but in premenopausal endometrium the functional layer becomes more echogenic so the basal layer is hardly visualized. So, the endometrial thickness is 1 to 3 mm in early proliferative cycle and it is 4 to 7 mm in late proliferative cycle and in secretory phase its thickness is 8 to 15 mm. Endometrium is always measured in sagittal plane and it is measured at the maximum thickness. In case if uh, there is fluid in endometrial cavity, then we measure uh, the thickness of anterior and posterior endometrium separately, excluding the fluid part. When we take endometrial thickness, we always exclude the halo around the endometrium. Let's talk about the uterine positions now. There are four uterine positions. Number one is antiverted, when uterus is tilted forward. Antiflexed, when there is a forward fold between the body and the cervix. Retroverted, when it is tilted backwards. Retroflexed, when it is flexed between the body and the cervix. Let's talk about the uterine size now. In childhood, two third is cervix and one third is body and fundus. At puberty, it's one is to one ratio between cervix, body and fundus. In adulthood, one third is cervix and two third body and fundus. Normal uterine size depends upon age and status. Prepubertal size is 2.5 to 3.5 centimeter in length. Cervix is greater than body. Reproductive age 7 to 9 cm in length, 4 to 5 cm in width and 2.5 to 4 cm in anterior posterior diameter. Postmenopausal, it's smaller, typically less than 6 cm in length with thin endometrium. Size of uterus is measured in three dimensions. Number one, length. Length is measured from the fundus to external loss in sagittal plane. Number two, anterior posterior diameter, which is the maximum depth of the uterus in sagittal plane. Number three is transverse, which is the wi widest diameter in coronal or transverse plane. And uterine volume is measured by this formula V is equal to L into AP into transverse into 0 0.523. Ovarian measurements. 
Ovaries are also measured in three dimensions, length, longest axis in sagittal plane, anterior posterior diameter, perpendicular to the length, transverse, measured in coronal plane. Ovarian volume formula is V is equal to L into AP into transverse into 0 0.523. Normal ovarian size by age, prepubertal is 1 to 3 cubic centimeter, reproductive age 6 to 15 cubic centimeter, postmenopausal less than 8 cubic centimeter. It is usually smaller. In short, enlarged uterus indicates fibroids adenomyosis or pregnancy. A small uterus indicates hypoplasia, postmenopausal atrophy. Enlarged ovaries indicate polycystic ovarian syndrome or ovarian cyst or any neoplasms. Reduced ovarian size indicates menopause, premature ovarian failure.